Hey, what's going on YouTube? Marine X back at it again. The Benchmade Bug Out is a knife that I was completely wrong about, but it's probably not for the reasons that you think. All right, so here's my small little collection of the Benchmade Bug Out, and they've made a lot of vari variations of this thing. Benchmade, you found yourself an EDC hit. Originally came out about six years ago during the Outdoor Expo in the summer of 2017. And that year we got a lot of good knives. And so Fox was releasing some knives and Spyderco had just released another variation of the paramilitary. And so Benchmade comes out with this bug out, which is sub two ounces. And they release it during the outdoor, outdoor expo. They release it in this blue color that people just get so excited about it's become one of the most popular knives in the EDC community. But we're gonna talk about why I was wrong about this thing. Should you buy it? Am I going to use this as much as I think I will continue to use it in the future? And what are some things I do and don't like about it? So first off, the Benchmade bug out. 3.2 inches for the blade length itself. It's made of CPM S30V steel. It is double thumb studded. Made in the USA, polymer material, axis lock for the locking mechanism. Overall length is about 7.5 inches and it weighs 1.85 ounces, a super lightweight knife. There's a lot of other knives made of polymer uh, and kind of basically made a glorified plastic and they're lightweight as well that has come out before and since then, but this is probably one of the most popular knives in this realm of knives for EDC purposes. So a lot of people have kind of come to look down upon the S30V steel on this thing. And I think it's mostly because people are looking down upon it because of newer, higher end steel that has come out on the market, especially at the price point of the Benchmade bug out. But at the end of the day, S30V steel, it does have a lot of corrosion resistance. One thing I've noticed about the Benchmade bug out, it's fairly easy to sharpen and it holds an edge decently well. These mini bug outs I have here, I probably never have sharpened. I've used them quite a bit, but overall, I've had no issues with actually trying to sharpen S30V steel, whether that's with this or it's with my buck knives or you know any other uh, manufacturer that chooses S30V steel. I like the corrosion resistance. I'm a big fan of any of the Benchmade bug outs that have any of the coatings on there. It gives an extra layer of protection for the steel itself. I like the Stormtrooper look of the mini bug out. And so the mini bug out, since we have that here, we might as well talk about this one as well. It came out in 2019, so about two years later, Benchmade knew they had a hit on their hands. So they basically just reduced the size of the bug out and came with a, a more miniature version of it. And the bug out would not stop from there. It came out with more Cerakote finishes, more different variations. It eventually got upgraded, quote unquote, upgraded for the aluminum scales in the M390 blade steel, which is probably out of all the Benchmade bug outs, my favorite. Blade steel is just fantastic to me. I love like the sunburst looking design of the scales. Like it looks like, I don't know, it kind of looks like the sun is just shining on there. And I'm a big fan of the offset colors with the red. I think that pop of red is dope. I wish the hardware was red as well. I, I know I can buy that third party, but you know, so that's probably my favorite look of it. And then they came out in, of course, the full carbon fiber with the upgrade. It's just a lot of upgrades to the carbon fiber overall. And they kind of get away from the very traditional way that the bench made bug out looks they added more hardware and made it more just kind of more durable and the thing about the carbon fiber one is still maintains the bench made bug out flavor they all even with the upgrades they all still have the same flavor of lightweight uh capable knife that you can put in your pocket the bug out has been an interesting knife because I, where did i come from why did why did i get it so when i was in the marine corps i was issued the gerber fast tanto auto fantastic knife but a lot of places i lived at it's illegal to carry you know it's fully automatic and it's freaking humongous and it's a it's a tank of a knife it's hard to sharpen this also has s30v steel on it but even with the actual, uh, there's more serrations on this, but I love the aggressive Tanto style on this. This makes doing stuff like breaking zip ties. And it just makes light work of that. It's fantastic. I love this knife. I do kind of um, wish that I can get a plain edge version of this, but I'm not interested in spending all the money just to get this thing all over again for the full auto version, but it's a fantastic knife. So when I got out the Marine Corps, some of the first knives that I was buying, of course, I ended up getting myself the Bucks. And I, for the long time, I had a Buck 314. I also had a Buck 110. 
And I like these knives a lot, liner lock, very capable knife, but it left a lot for left a lot out on the table itself. Yes, it's a bug. This one specifically is a made in America bug. They have bugs that aren't made in the USA. Love the wood scales and all of that good stuff as well. Then I ended up falling in the world of just picking up knives from Walmart. I ended up getting mossy oak knives and Ozark trail knives. And I tried to put all of these in my kill kits when I went hunting. And I began to immediately notice failures for each one of these things. First off, the mossy oak uh, knife can only be carried tip down in your pocket, which is completely ridiculous. I know this uh, glass breaker is probably threaded in there and I could take it out, but I've never done it. And the glass breaker gets on my nerves. Pocket clip kind of sucks. When this is in your pocket, it backs out of your pocket and this will actually kind of almost fall out of your pocket. So that kind of really sucks as well. And as much as I like this fast hand toe, it was a big beastly boy to EDC, especially when I was wearing basketball shorts and joggers and pants that just weren't, if I weren't wearing a belt or anything like that, that would droop down and pull down the pants. So I found myself in the world of the bug out. And so, you know, the very first one that I ended up getting was the actual combo edge for the bug out. And I enjoyed it a lot. The only thing I, I would say about having the combo edge first is there was just a lot of tasks, especially with food prep that I was unable to do that I would, I prefer to do. I have two toddlers and I, I use my EDC knives sometimes to slice up fruit and stuff like that. And the combo edge is just not so great for that. So the next purchase I ended up getting was the aluminum version of this thing, which is fantastic for food prep and all of that good stuff. But it doesn't matter any of the things about the bug out. It has its pros. It, you know, it it's super lightweight. You could basically fit it anywhere. You can wear it with any type of pants or it's not going to weigh you down. Two Omega shaped springs hold the actual blade open against the access lock when you're using the Benchmade bug out, which makes it an effective way to open this thing and have it safely opened and all that. But I've had one of the springs break. I was not trying to DIY and change that shit in. I sent it to uh, Benchmade. They changed it out. But it effectively made it almost useless. I mean, you can manually open it and all that good stuff, but I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. Another thing is these, if you use this thing in an uh, outdoor environment, whether it's hiking, camping, whatever, dirt gets into this hardware very easily, and you have to keep this stuff cleaned out, which I really didn't have too much worries when I had my bench, my, my Gerber, and that was a fully automatic knife. And although the Grivery is a fantastic polymer and the, the handles or scales are fantastic for the lightweight durability usage, it makes it feel a little cheap. It makes it feel very, very almost like a toy in your hand. And it's insanely priced. When this thing first came out, MSRP was $125. Don't quote me on that. But I know that I looked at videos six years ago. People were getting it pre-ordered for $115. Benchmade now has this MSRP on their website. On their website, 180 bucks baseline you haven't done any you just got the normal blue stone wash finish bench made bug out s30v steel you haven't done anything special to it you haven't changed the scales or got it coated or anything like that 180 bucks and i understand the price of things have risen over the years but if i look at some of the competitors that come out around that same time the spider co pm3 came out that year fox knives came out there some knives as well those prices haven't risen as much as the bug out comparatively so that's an oddity for me but the biggest thing for me is i thought this was going to be an all-around knife for my outdoor uses this is not that the bug out doesn't matter if i have it in the aluminium version which i'm a big fan of especially with the m390 i think that blade steel freaking is just fantastic for any task that I put it through. I love the stun, the uh, sunburst look of these scales. It kind of looks like the sun is just bursting and then it kind of flows down and it, it's a little bit more contoured. I'm a big fan of that. Or the carbon fiber, they went full carbon fiber and then they bumped it up to S90V for a premium blade steel. It doesn't matter which one I use. Using the Benchmade bug out for more than 15 minutes at a time really, really sucks. And a lot of outdoor tasks that I use my knives for take more than 15 minutes, whether it's, you know, I'm working with some wood and I'm trying to prepare for a fire, but especially if I've just put down a fresh kill and this is a part of a kill kit, I can't use the bug out for an extended amount of time to, to, to begin processing a kill 
whether that is the skin or taking off lats or taking off processing meat, it just gets uncomfortable very, very quickly. Food prep. So even if the, the kill's already processed or if we're trying to process something else on a site, using this thing for longer than 15 minutes, fruit, food prep is a real thing. Like you're trying to slice a bunch of stuff, whether it's potatoes or meat or whatever. This, because it's so thin in the hand, like it just gets uncomfortable very fast. Now I have about regular size hands, a little bit larger hands. So for you, this might be comfortable, but for me, it doesn't work well at all. Another, but the biggest issue for me is putting this a part of my kill kit means I'm using this in the winter and fall months. And I'm using this with gloves on because the actual access, like the pivot itself or the lock itself is so flush with the scales. It's almost impossible. I won't say impossible, but it's extremely hard to use. If you want to open it via the access lock, you, it's hard to use that with gloves on. Sometimes my dexterity with gloves, I don't use a thumb stud. I prefer to just kind of pull this down. I've had an issue with that for any of the regular bug outs. And I, I almost always end up picking up the aluminum bug out because it just feels a little bit easier to use for that particular reason. The Benchmade bug out, I think, is almost a it's a fantastic marketing name because it makes it sound like it's the perfect bug out knife. And in that respect, this is a perfect city bug out knife. If you're going from the house, you're throwing a bag on, you're bugging out to wherever your location is. Yes, this is this is perfect for that. And, you know, any tasks that you might be doing in the city, cutting zip, zip ties and boxes and whatever, this is perfect for that type of task. But once you get into the woods and outdoors and you're using this for longer than 10, 15 minutes, it gets uncomfortable quickly. I just think that there are better use cases than this. So for everyday carry, the bench may bug out is goaded. Any of your normal everyday carry tasks, breaking, open, uh, opening boxes, breaking down boxes, zip ties cutting a little bit of rope if you have to do a little bit of slicing and stuff in the kitchen for kiddos the bug out's great for that it's lightweight it disappears in your pocket it just feels really this little flex in the actual scales themselves that shit does, does just does not matter i've had no issues with that at all so for edc type of tasks oh it's great it works just fine but once you want to actually use it in an outdoor hunting or kill kit environment that's when it for me, kind of lacks a little bit. But let's just talk about it for a actual everyday use knife. Is it worth it? No. That's only because of the price. The price on the Benchmade bug out is ridiculous. I don't know why the pricing keeps going up. Benchmade doesn't have to come out with a press release and tell us that their materials cost more or global shit. They don't have to do any of that trash, but they just keep bumping the price up and we're not getting more juice for the squeeze. Like, I would totally understand, like for me personally, I buy these knives on the military exchange or base website. So for instance, when I buy the mini bug out, this thing literally cost me $99. I think that's a reasonable price for the mini bug out. But if you buy this in the open market, I think it's like $140, $150. The uh, combo edge bug out I bought on base, it was $135. I just, you know, when I first picked this thing up. I have no issue recommending these things for the $99 to $140 mark because there's a lot out there to be, you know, to be wished upon. Although at the end of the day, these are just polymer scales. They are glorified, super plastic scales, I, I mean, the best way to say it. There's a lot of lack of hardware that you you were kind of used to. These, these scales aren't lined with anything. They're not steel lined, so they're not super reinforced. The bug out's not made for slapping it with logs and all that type of stuff. But for the price point, you would almost think that it should be made for some of that stuff. But if you're going to be spending $180 base, that is, I think, should be the price point for the aluminum version of the bug out with the M390 steel. It's it's coated, the beautiful, the thumb studs, the aluminum scales, the design of it. I think this is a $180 knife, but it's not. It's over 200 bucks. And of course, we're not even going to talk about the carbon fiber price, which is expensive as well. So long term review of the bug out. It's a fantastic EDC knife. Is it the best? Is it is it if I was forced to only have three knives, would this be one of my three? No, it, it would not be. It's brother the bailout. That's more to come. That that absolutely might be one of my my go to's. But when it comes to just doing a little bit of everything and for how I use it, the thing that limits this the most has to be the price. 
if Benchmade decides to drop that price back to what it used to be or even close to where it used to be when it first released this thing, this will be easier to suggest. But not only have they not done that, other companies have raised their prices as well. So who cares that they have those pricings? Like Gerber came out with the Gerber Assert to directly compete with the Benchmade bug out. And when they came out with this Assert, they came out with the same type of pricing scheme. It's like 175 bucks or something like that. I think I got it on, I got it with the military discount for 112. But this thing here is nowhere near as great an action as the Benchmade. But who cares? According to Gerber can just make this pricing as such because people are going to pay for it. It does have a lot of unique features that the Benchmade doesn't have. But I will say this for me personally, unless you're getting the Benchmade on the used market, which caution you when you're doing that, because here's a Benchmade clone. This Benchmade clone looks incredibly similar to the Benchmade bug out real life. I mean, the actual knives themselves are almost indistinguishable. The biggest difference is the clone's blade is smaller in length than the real bug out, but you wouldn't know that if you had these, unless you had these things neck to neck and side by side. So if I lay the clone on top of the real bug out, you can just see it's slightly shorter than the real bug out, but, and then of course the clone has no markings on it, but I'm pretty sure there's clones out there that have markings on them that kind of make it a little bit more realistic. So I would get it from a reputable website like NAFSIL, Blade HQ, if they have used models or something like that, you know, but I, I would caution you with getting on a used market, but if you can find the bug out on sale, sub $140, if you want it to be your EDC knife and like your one and done knife for EDC purposes, the bug out is reasonably priced. Could the scales be better? Yes. Is it, does it feel cheap in the hand? Yes. But if you want something where Benchmade does stand by their warranty, I haven't had any issues with their warranty process. They have this life sharp program, which is you send it in, you pay for the shipping. They'll sharpen the knife for you. If you're not down with sharpening your own knives, then you know it's an it's an easy recommendation. I think it should be closer to like the hundred and ten dollar mark. There's so many knives that have S30V steel, which costs less. Like for instance, this buck right here, this buck one twelve uh, pro has S30V steel, and this thing is fantastic. And I think it's I think I picked this thing up for like a hundred and fifteen dollars or something like that. Now, of course, every uh, you're paying a little bit for the Benchmade task tax in for the ease of use for that for the actual bench may but it's hard for me to recommend the bench may bug out when there are other s30v knives on the market which are just as good as the bug out except for probably not as lightweight there's a lot going on with bench may right now and i am a bench made sheep but i haven't bought a bench made in a long time it's probably been almost a year and a half since i bought a bench made and it's probably going to stay that way for a while Comment down below, do you own one? Are you going to get one? Is this something? Should I sell mine? Should I just throw them all away? I would love to know what your comments down below. If this is your first time stopping by, hit that subscribe button, join the battalion. We would love to have you here. If this is not your first time stopping by, well, welcome back. Thank you once again for watching me run my grape. For everyone else, we'll speak soon.